I have walked 15,000 steps a day for seven days and this is what happened. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? So, four walks today. I am at the furthest end of the car park. I'm still drenched when I came back. Um, I've got to say, today is so much nicer than yesterday. Wow, my legs are really sore tonight. I've got three foot out of the So I lost inches off my body. I have got so much energy. So much energy. I wanted to see how walking actually affected my weight and my body. Life is so busy. Actually, how practical is this to do? So, to get in my 15,000 step target, I had to do this, and this, and this, and this. Do you know what? Fitting movement into your life is really, really difficult. And if, like me, you've got a desk job, or you've got lots of commitments, then actually, it's quite tough. And the thought of going to a gym after work isn't always appealing. So, can walking actually help me lose weight? So I wanted to find out whether walking, you know, that very basic movement, the thing we were really designed to do, could it actually help me to lose weight? Just walking. So I did this challenge nearly a year ago, well, just over a year ago, actually, when I was nearly five stone heavier. So I thought, you know what it's like when you're heavier, you kind of burn more calories because you're moving around more weight. So I thought, well, actually, can it work for me now? Can it work for me now that I am nearly five stone lighter? And more importantly, if it can work for me, could it work for you? I think there are many reasons why we don't prioritise movement when we're on a weight loss journey. I think I, I know myself in the past have thought, do I have time for this? Will it make me more hungry and therefore knock me off my journey? Do I have to go join a gym? Do I have to do a couch to 5k? And I think once you start thinking about all those obstacles that are getting in your way with movement, you quickly come to the one conclusion that is, do you know what? I just won't bother. So before I actually get into the results, which were fantastic, I've got to say, I'm quite amazed actually how things turned out. Let's get into some of the benefits because you know me, I like to do my research and I like to know that what I'm doing has more than one benefit and that is the weight loss. I like to know that it's actually good for me in some other way. So this is what I found. So first of all, it actually reduces heart attacks and strokes by reducing cholesterol, which reduces your blood pressure, which then improves your circulation. It also reduces cortisol, which, ladies, as we know, it's that belly fat. It produces our belly fat, the, the cortisol, the stress hormone cortisol. The next thing, a study in the University of Canvas discovered that low state activity, like walking, actually prevented the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. And actually, they even found that in people who already had dementia and Alzheimer's, it actually slowed down the process. How crazy is that? That is, that was mind blowing for me. Walking also improves your overall well-being because walking is known, or any activity, but walking helps release those endorphins, which are happy hormones. As you know what it's like, when you're out in nature, you just feel better anyway before those hormones, those endorphins kick in. So that's another thing, it's a good mood booster. It's also known to improve your sleep. And I have to say, I experienced this myself this week, absolutely. By 10 o'clock, I was out for the count and I generally didn't wake up much before seven, which if you've been around any length of time, you know me, sleeping is not, is not my thing. I don't do it well, but this week, it has definitely, definitely knocked me out and kept me out. Walking is also known as well to boost your immune system. And the final thing I want to talk about, which is the thing that is probably closer to my heart than anything else, is the effect that it has on our insulin. Because excess insulin and insulin sensitivity is what puts on the weight and takes us down that road to type 2 diabetes, which is not something 
any of us wants. So walking is known to improve insulin sensitivity by making the body more efficient at using glucose and having to produce less insulin, which is the body's fat storing hormone. Yep, so that's the one I think for me that I was sold that. Without the rest, without all the other benefits, which are amazing as well, that I was absolutely sold. Now on to the results. I measured absolutely everything before starting. I did my weight, I did my measurements, I took a log of my moods, all in the days leading up to the challenge starting. So I've got my phone, which has got my list on you, because I want to make sure that I give you the exact results. So in terms of weight loss, I lost 1.1 pound. Now when I did my challenge first time around, I remember losing two pound, but this time 1.1 pound and I changed nothing about my diet. I did exactly what I would normally do. So I lost a pound. However, however, I've got scales that will tell me what my muscle mass is doing as well. My muscle mass had actually gone up by nearly five pound. So I may have lost only a pound on the scales, but I've gained about five pound of muscle mass. Now, some of that will be water, but definitely, definitely, definitely has increased my muscle mass. So really on the scales, you would have been looking at probably about a three or a four pound loss, really, in actual terms. But that's okay, because we're here to lose fat. Not necessarily to see the scales move. But this is the most amazing part. First of all, my sleep, markedly better. I literally would, I, my head would hit the pillow, I'd be out for the count, and I, and I would, might wake up once, because you know, ladies of a certain age need the bathroom, but straight back to sleep, and I would have a good, at least eight hours, which is not me, I'd be lucky to get six and a half, seven, so that was an absolute bonus. My mood improved massively. My energy levels improved massively. Even now, as you can probably tell, I'm still really quite hyped, which is really strange. Um, but even on the first day, I noticed after doing the first couple of walks, even then, my mood was better. And I've noticed all the way through the week, even on days where my legs were sore, and I was a bit tired, I still felt so much better in myself so I've had a massive massive mood boost this week and actually let's get on to the measurements because this is the bit you might want to know the most about so on my best largest part I lost half an inch around my rib cage I lost one and a half inches around my waist I lost an inch around my hips I lost two inches that's right, two inches around my hips. Um, around my thigh, I lost half an inch. Around my arm, I lost an inch. Around my arm, I lost an inch. I wasn't walking on my hands, but I lost an inch. And finally, my calf, I lost half an inch. Mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. So I lost seven inches off my body in a week. Seven inches. I'm going to say that again. Seven inches off my body in a week. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Going forward, will I be walking 15,000 steps a day? No, absolutely not. <laughs> because the time that it took to do it, especially having a Monday to Friday, nine till five, sit down job, it's just not possible for me. Because that worked out to me about seven miles a day and I just don't have the time generally to fit in seven miles a day. You know, certain things had to fall by the wayside this week for me to get in those steps. Absolutely. Um, if I had a week off, could I do it? Yes. When I'm working, no. It's just not realistic. So what am I going to be doing going forward? Well, I've been looking at many sources to say what is recommended for an adult. And for me, I'm going to be following along with the National Health Services guidelines, um, which are to be doing resistance training or strength training at least two times a week. I've already got that built in for three. 
and it's to be moving 150 minutes which works out at roughly 30 minutes a day for five days i can definitely do that if i can do 15,000 steps in a day i can definitely do that maybe even seven days a week but i think five is a really good place to aim for um, and the final thing then is making sure that you reduce your sitting time and that's one thing especially having a desk job that if we can just get up every 20 minutes every 30 minutes I mean if like me you got to watch that reminds me when to get up I'm going to do that to make sure at least I stand at least once every hour so that's what I'm going to be doing going forward now there might be another video in that so Let's try it for, um, what should we say, a month? Let's try it for a month. Let's try it for a month and see what happens. So, if you're here, just watching the challenge, then check in in about a month's time and uh, let's see what happens with this. So anyway, I'm gonna leave you with the little clip of my final steps on my final day. These are the final steps of the final walk of the final day. Let's watch it to go down the road, there's sunshine and light.